steam engine based on a design from 2,000 years ago? <laughs> I'm Doug North, and on my channel I show you how to make, use, and appreciate interesting items from the past. This time I'll make this tin can steam engine from plans found in this 62-year-old magazine. When you think of steam engines, you probably picture the railroad locomotives from the 18 or 1900s. Or maybe you think of the big stationary steam engines like those designed by Newcomen and Watt. Chances are you don't think of a steam engine from 2,000 years ago designed by a guy in Egypt who spoke ancient Greek. That guy was Hero of Alexandria. And his steam engine was called the Eolopile. At the top, there was a sphere mounted to two horizontally aligned pivots. Below, a tank of water was heated with a fire. When you take any volume of water and turn it into steam, it expands by 1,600 times. That creates pressure in the tank. Lots of it. In trying to escape to the atmosphere, the steam traveled up a tube and into the sphere, where it exited two nozzles sticking out. This created a jet effect, which caused the sphere to rotate. Our tin can steam engine is going to rotate on a vertical axis rather than a horizontal one. Let's get into it. Here's the magazine where I found the plants. They are very brief, so I hope this video helps you out. Here's what we'll need. A pine board, a tire valve core, some eighth inch copper tubing, a sewing pin, solder and flux, a coat hanger, a five ounce can of evaporated milk, and a small alcohol stove. The small can and the tubing will form the basis of the steam engine. The pin and the valve stem will serve as the pivot on which the steam engine rotates. The board and coat hanger will form the base and hanger. The plans call for a small can of sternal like this one, but trust me, you're going to want a little alcohol stove like this. We'll drain the can by putting two holes on either side. These will contain the two nozzle jets that propel the little steam engine. Place it an inch and a quarter that's halfway up the side of the can. And I'm just going to start the holes. I don't want to make them any bigger than an eighth of an inch, which is the size of the tubing that will be going into them. So there's one hole started. Now we can rinse this thing out. Finding the exact center of the top of the can is very important for the balance of the steam engine. For this task, I'm going to use a center finding tool and a fine tipped marker. We place it over the top, draw a line, rotate it some, draw another line, rotate it one more time, draw a line. And where all of those intersect is where that hole needs to be. I'll center punch that spot and then make the hole with an awl and a hammer. With the can emptied of its contents, it's time to work on the two little bent copper nozzle jets. To make the copper tubing easier to bend, I'm going to anneal it first. This makes the metal much softer. I've set up two fire bricks here on the bench. I'll put the copper tubing on top and then use this butane torch to heat it up and then I'll let it cool on its own. Now that the tubing has cooled, the other thing we can do is fill it with a substance to sort of support it as it's being bent. I'm just going to use some baking soda that I have on hand. To fill the tubing, I'm first going to make a couple of small wooden plugs by shaving this dowel down to a point and pressing it into the end of the tubing and then trim it off. And I'm going to prepare another one. Okay. This is just some household baking soda that I've put into an extra jar. Use a piece of paper to fill up the tubing with baking soda. And that's pretty much filled. I'm going to cap it using the other piece of wood here. Press that cap in there firmly. Trim off the excess. Find something round to bend the tubing around, such as this hammer handle. I need two 90 degree bends, keep it stationary on one side and wrap around with the other. Doing it in that manner, the tubing does not crush. And I'll just do one more here. Two 90 degree bends for the two nozzles. To cut the tubing, you can use a small saw 
or a little tubing cutter like this one. Our two jet nozzles for our steam engine. For this project, I'm gonna use Staybrite solder. It's silver bearing, it comes with its own little bottle of flux and the solder itself. As with any soldering project, make sure the surfaces are clean. Apply some flux to the joint, then heat both the can and the tubing. When both pieces are hot, apply the solder and a little extra heat to help it flow. Repeat this for the second nozzle jet, and here's what it looks like. These are the valves that are inside of the stem of bicycle tires, car tires, that sort of thing. We're gonna be using one of these as the pivot around which the steam engine will spin. Here's what one of those valve cores looks like. There's a pin at the top, and then two pieces that can rotate around each other. And the bottom one has a rubber, a black rubber gasket. And we'll be using that to seal the top of the steam engine can. Modifying the valve core is gonna be hard to show on camera, so I'm gonna describe it to you first. The first thing we need to do is push the top of the pin down to expose the widened area at the base, which then we can snip off, then snip off the top portion. Next, we need to grind the bottom section until we can see the spring contained within. Then use something sharp like this needle to pull that spring out and the remainder of the pin will come out with it. Here I am cutting the lower portion of the pin. And now the top of it. Finally, using a needle to pull out the spring and the remainder of the pin inside. Next, we need a single all-metal pin with a, with a head, and it needs to go up through the bottom of the valve core, making sure that the point goes through the opening in the very top, and then we just let it drop. And now, the entire thing is suspended on the head of the pin. The next step will be to put two bends in the pin. I'm gonna do one bend at the very end, as you can see, I put one bend in that. Now I'm gonna do a second one so that this point is then pointing down. Space it out about a quarter of an inch. It doesn't have to be exact, you'll work that out later, and then bend. With the pin removed from the valve core, air and steam can escape up through the center. So I'm gonna carve a small wooden peg and glue it in place. To fit it into the end of the valve core. I'm going to apply some super glue. I've got the valve core with the needle installed and a wooden plug at the bottom. Carefully expand the size of the hole in the top until the black gasket can be press fit in there and held very securely by friction alone. I'm gonna open that hole up using a reamer. Slowly expand the size of the hole. Open that up. Perfect. I've cut a length from the coat hanger that's eight and a half inches long. We need six inches for the upright and two and a half for the horizontal. And I've made a mark here right at the six inch mark. I'm just gonna hold it with one pair of pliers and bend it 90 degrees with the other pair. Next, we need to flatten the end of the horizontal piece of the hanger. To do so, I've got this very small anvil, which I'm gonna put on the bench. And then I'm gonna use a ball peen hammer to flatten about a half an inch worth of this wire. And there is the flattened end. That just gives us some additional width to work with. Next, we need to file a small V notch in the very end of the horizontal portion of the upright. Grab a small needle file and just start creating a groove. So it doesn't need to be huge. It should be probably bigger than the pin. Deeper than the pin is wide, but it doesn't have to be a, a really large notch. Here's our progress on the hanger. We've got a six inch upright, a two and a half inch horizontal. I flattened the end and I filed a small notch in the end of the wire. So the can will be hanging from this. The upright portion of the pin will rest in the notch we filed. And then where the tip of the pin touches the hanger is where we need to drill a very small hole.
Here's where I discovered that my drill bit would not fit within my electric drill, so I'm doing it the old-fashioned way with a pin vise. The pin drops into that hole, like so. Okay, we got the board marked out at four by six. I've got a little battery-powered trim saw sitting right here, so that's what I'm gonna use. Here we go, we got our board at four by six inches. Now I'm just gonna take it over to the sander. There's the finished result. I've sanded the two rough edges and I've given it about a quarter of an inch chamfer along all four of the top sides. With the steam engine and stand done and the base complete, all we have left to do is drill a small hole in the base in order to accommodate the wire stand. I've got a drill bit that's just a bit smaller then the wire, just place this, that wire in there, press down, there we go. This is now finished enough for us to give it a test run. I'm going to summarize several days worth of troubleshooting. Sterno isn't really made for boiling. As such, it's not hot enough to generate enough steam to make this engine turn. Here we see the very same setup working just fine with the assistance of a butane torch. So tip number one is use an alcohol stove. Tip number two, make sure the nozzle jets are parallel to the ground. Tip three, pinch the nozzle openings down a little bit. Tip four, bend the nozzles in toward the can so that the angle is a bit less than 90 degrees. Tip five, make sure that the hanger pin is plumb. Tip six, over time the valve core gasket will get hard and no longer make a good seal. Replace it or use some glue. And finally, tip seven, over time some brown gunk may clog the nozzle jets. I believe this is the can lining that's burning up. Wash it out. Preparing to run the engine is simple. Just add about one ounce of water to the top hole. If you've had to glue the top, Hold the nozzle jets under a faucet, and that's another way to get about an ounce of water in there. It takes uh, about a minute for the alcohol stove to come up to temperature, and then it's going to take a minute or two to heat up the water within the steam engine in order to create steam. We're starting to get a jet. And there we go. Starting to spin. <laughs> Look at that thing go. Whoa. <laughs> oh my God. Jeez. I have no idea how many RPMs that is, but it's really moving. Oh, that's satisfying. Hell yeah. I think it's just about out of water. And I think it's safe to say that we are officially out of water. So I'm gonna extinguish that flame. Hero steam engine, ladies and gentlemen. If you've enjoyed this crazy little project, please hit the thumbs up icon and the subscribe link. Leave any questions and comments down below. And while you're there, check out the full materials list for everything I used in this project. Until next time, I'm Doug North. Take care.